welcome back to Carrie Moody. Today is March 21st, and we are waiting on the Madeline Soto press conference. Um, it's been a while since we had an update, and I am seeing on X that uh, the mother possibly has been arrested. Um, I also heard rumors she was arrested and she bonded out. So I really don't know what the press conference is about, but I bet uh, it's something because they they haven't done one in quite some time. Thank you guys so much for being here. I appreciate it. It should start in about seven minutes. Um, hi, Sylvia. Hi, Six Sense, MBH. Thank you guys. I appreciate you being here. So while we're waiting on that to uh, start, let's take a look at this video real quick. Um, and then we will, I'll keep an eye on that press conference. Madeline Soto. Her remains discovered earlier this month in a wooded area in Kissimmee, Florida. Let me know if you can hear that, please. Stephen Stearns is the prime suspect in her death. He has not yet been charged in connection with her death. He's only facing child sex abuse charges pertaining to beautiful Madeline. Court TV producer Cody Thomas returned to the scene of the crime. He is joining us live this morning with the very latest. Cody, good morning to you. Good morning, Julie. We did, of course, take that trip down Hickory Tree Road, ultimately where Madeline's, Madeline Soto's body was found by police. And in all essence, of the, Thank you, essence Sylvia. of the phrase, when we went down that road, it's kind of in the middle of nowhere, moderately busy, a lot of flat land. But eventually, after going three or four miles down that long span of road, we did, a bit, did eventually find the exact spot where Madeline Soto was found Thank by police. Thank you, Never Let's Lose. I appreciate that. So we just turned onto Hickory Road where Madeline Soto's body was found. Not to be confused with Old Hickory Road. That's where police and investigators say they did catch Stephen Stearns in that 2010 Lincoln MKZ changing a tire the morning of February 26th when Maddie Soto went missing. But as we look out here on Hickory Road, we see that it's pretty flat. There are some wooded areas to the left. If you look up to the right of the road, that is it. That ex that's the exact spot. Where Maddie Soto was found. But right here behind me is the memorial site, actually where she was found, right in between those trees. And we actually have some community advocates, advocate members out here with us, and they tell us that one of them actually has been in contact with the owner of this land right here behind me. And that day, that morning of February 26th, they say that gate was open just across the street here in this area. This little divot off of Hickory Road is where a witness online describes where he saw Stephen Stearns kneeling down, changing a tire that morning of February 26th when Maddie Soto went missing. Now you can see it's just a little gravi gravel divot, a lot of flat land back here, private farmland. And of course, when we were out of that memorial, Julie, we saw five or six people coming up, giving trinkets to the memorial, letters, teddy bears, just honoring the life of little Madeline Soto. Cody, wanted to ask you, please, that area you showed us where Madeline's body was found, and it is believed by police that her body was moved in the early morning hours, the day that she died. I'm curious how busy the area is. Could there have been cars going by at the time, maybe some witnesses to this that we just haven't heard about yet? Yes, that's a good thing to point out there, Julie. When we were out there, like it was moderately busy we saw maybe 15 to 20 cars, but it was absolutely possible because we know it was done allegedly in the morning. So it was broad daylight. If anyone came by, they definitely would have seen him doing something if that were the case. Right, Cody, this just sounds funny. The whole changing of the tire, all of that. So we know he was on the side of the road at one point, uh, but we wonder, is it even confirmed that he had that flat tire, huh? That Hi, Catering Winch. Right Thank you for being here. here we just have people, a few minutes left. There's a Hickory Tree Road, and there's an old Hickory Tree Road. And then they should be getting started with that press conference. The tire was taking place on old Hickory Tree Road. A witness statement online says it was Hickory Tree Road. So there could be a little confusion going back and forth as to where exactly that he was. But it is what we've picked up to be described as right across from where that body was found. So 
you know, if, if he was out there, could the tire, the flat tire have been a ruse to try to look like an act? Hi, to make Misha. it easier to go dump a body across that fence. Mm. We'll know when more information comes out. Mm -hmm. You read my mind, Cody. Uh, could be staging. Our next guest will speak to that. Uh, but want to say a big thank you to you. Court TV producer Cody Thomas, thank you so much for that update from Florida. Now I want to bring in that very special guest. You will recognize So him. this he video is, is just from um, last night, I believe Kenny it was. Kinsey yesterday or last Dr. night, one of the Kenny two. So it's Kinsey. a new Good one. Good morning to you, Dr. Kinsey. Thanks for coming on the program today. Good morning, Ms. Julie. Thank you for having me. Of course. Uh, so you heard me talking with Cody about, was he there making it look like he was changing a tire to be in the vicinity to dispose of the body? Curious of, you know, what, what your thoughts are on that, Dr. Kinsey. Well, Ms. Julie, many times these predators really don't have a plan for the end game. So you may see a level of staging. Uh, they call it ad hoc staging where it's not necessarily premeditated, but Stearns is taking advantage of every opportunity to, uh, to dispose of this, this young lady. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and Dr. Kinsey, I'm wondering if, if the homicide occurred in the home, I'm just wondering that because of the allegations of sex, uh, sexual abuse that have already been brought against Stephen Stearns. And then we know police have said there was a point where they've got surveillance video of his car returning to the home and they believe that Madeline's body is already um, lifeless, but still in that vehicle at the time. And then they believe, you know, the disposal perhaps may have occurred in the early morning hours, the day after her death. Uh, talk to us about uh, your thoughts on how this child might have died and then how the plan to dispose of her body may have been carried out. Hey, Shorty. Thank you for being here. Well, in this situation, Miss Julie, we see, I believe what we see is that law enforcement did enough in stage one that they can slow down the game. They have these additional charges with uh, exploitation Such a horrible and case. trafficking of other uh, children. So they're able to slow it down. They've got Stearns put where he needs to be, and I don't believe we're going to see him ever get out. But now law enforcement can slow down and do that methodical forensic investigation. And I'm sure. Uh, they are probably processing evidence daily to get us those answers. But th the perfect part of this investigation, if you could have a perfect part, was they come out of the gate swinging and they got enough on. You don't need to pay a single penny for a useless doorbell camera subscription. Starting now. The front end that. And we may be having a little bit of difficulty with your video. Uh, let's take a look at a clip from the Sheriff's Department. They're talking about yes. the items that belong to little Madeline found in a dumpster. We have video evidence that shows Stephen Stearns discarding items in a dumpster in that apartment complex in Kissimmee at 735 on Monday. He wasn't February very smart 26th. with this stuff. Detectives later recovered Madeline's backpack and her school issued laptop from that dumpster. Okay, looks like we have your, your shot back, Dr. Kinsey. The tech gremlins are interrupting us this morning. Uh, so I wanted to just give you a chance. The last part of what you were saying, um, would you re mind repeating it for us so we have it, please? I'm going to pause that real quick so I can switch over and see if they have started. Doesn't look like they have. So there is rumor on X that uh, Madeline's mom, Jen, has been arrested. Um, there's rumor she was arrested and then she bonded out. Uh, then there's rumor that she was just arrested in general. So hopefully no, they get started here real soon. I, I was praising law enforcement for coming out of the gate swinging. They have uh, gathered enough information that they can slow down now, they can be methodical instead of pushed against the wall and having to react. And hopefully they won't make those mistakes with that forensic evidence that are all too common. We all make them, but now they, they've got time on their side now because I don't believe Stearns is going anywhere.
That's a really yeah. great point, Dr. Kinsey. Those uh, charges, I'm, I'm he's thinking, there for and life. I said this on my Again, show a thank of you guys ago, so much for being here. I really appreciate you. Right now on the thank you for joining us to watch this. Right. They've got him locked up. He's not going anywhere. He's not going to harm anyone if he is the predator that law enforcement believes he is. Uh, tell us, please, Dr. Kinsey, if you were uh, hired to consult on this case and try to figure out how little Madeline died, walk us through what you would do, please. As I've said many times, Ms. Julie, I would break it up. You've got several different crime scenes here. You've got the location in the brush 20 miles away where Stern allegedly dumped little Madeline. You've got the vehicle and True. then you've got the home or wherever this crime took place. But let's just say it's not in the home. Let's say it was mobile. It was in the vehicle. You still have a level of sexual assault and all kind of horrible things that, uh, you know, this, this young lady lived through prior to this act. So you've got at least four crime scenes from the jump. And I would I would break them down, take them one at a time. You know, how, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? And right. I would break it down and have someone in charge, <laughs> someone coordinating the entire uh, action. And we would work them one at a time and then everyone get together and stay in touch. And we, we would put it together and try to make a great case. You know, hearing you say that, Dr. Kinsey, it's the first time I've heard anyone say there are really four yeah, it is. crime scenes here. Uh, that really helps you uh, think about hey, poetic justice. Thank you for being uh, here. That occurred here it, it, from from the time that that child was supposed to go to school and was never brought to school, and from the time that uh, her precious body was recovered, uh, discarded like trash. We've got to leave it there for now, but would love to have you back on this case and on uh, many others when you have time. Dr. Kenny Kinsey, thank you for the excellent analysis today. We'll see you soon. All right, so that's just kind of a background. Um, let's see what's going on here. This is something breaking. A shootout at a hotel. To the people and places you visit. At which time the suspect barricaded himself in that same room. Police say they found the suspect dead. No one else was inside of that room. The officer who was shot went to a hospital and is stable this Can afternoon. Can everybody hear that Police audio the from the Law video? Enforcement is taking the lead on this investigation, which is standard for cases like this. Here at home, there is a $5,000 reward right now for anyone who can help Orlando police track down two men wanted for murder. These are the guys police say they're looking for. Look at your screen here. One of them appears to have a gun tucked in his pants. Police say they're accused of shooting 22-year-old Michaela Patterson. Three others also got hurt on September 22nd at the Jernigan Gardens Apartments on Mercy Drive. Police also arrested two people already for this case. If you know anything, you can call okay, Crime Line at one 800 I'm known to mess up my audio, so. <laughs> you will stay anonymous. Look at this. Winter Springs police say several people broke into some cars and they need help finding who these people are. Look at the video. The burglaries happened at Seminole Crossings on Monday. Police say several of the cars targeted here in this surveillance video were not even locked. If you recognize any of these people, Winter Springs police say they want to hear from you. Starting this Saturday, you will see fewer lifeguards along parts of Cocoa Beach. All of this stems over a debate between Cocoa Beach City and Brevard County about who pays for them. Cocoa Beach lifeguards will still be on station at, as usual, on the city beaches, but the four lifeguards who will not be on duty are seasonal county guards. One county commissioner told West 2 Cocoa Beach is neglecting its responsibility of beach safety. The mayor disagreed. It's the county's responsibility to make sure that, that uh, people are safe. I think, in, in my opinion, um, whether it be uh, life on land or life on the water, it's all the same. While there will be fewer lifeguards, the same advice is the same. If you go in the water, please stay near a lifeguard 
Station. Meantime, in Seminole County, the city of Oviedo wants to prepare the next generation of lifeguards to one day staff its public pools. The second half of a lifeguard training camp is happening this weekend at the Oviedo Gym and Aquatic Center. It's for kids between 11 and 15, never too early to start. The camp will teach about water safety, rescues, CPR, and first aid, also other roles of a lifeguard. Classes run from 9 in the morning until noon. The Biden administration is suing Apple after years of allegations. The company has been hurting competition. The long-anticipated lawsuit claims Apple's restrictive app store and high fees tightly control how third-party tech seconds. companies Let me see if I interact can find with it its products and services. Um, on a different the case channel. is the Biden administration's latest effort to hold big tech companies accountable. An Army major's Facebook post is raising awareness about cultural hair for current and future Native American soldiers. We're told that uh, growing our hair is symbolic of our growth. I actually you know, know a few uh, young men and women who you know, have hesitated uh, to join the military due to a change in their cultural identity. How traditional Native American culture is being blended with traditional military uniform. In connection with me just a second and let me get that pulled up. I'm just going to put this on Madeline. for a second. Court TV producer Cody Thomas returned to the scene of the crime. He is joining us live this morning with the very latest. Cody, good morning to you. Well, good morning, Julie. We did, of course, take that trip down Hickory Tree Road. Ultimately, where Madeline's, Madeline Soto's body was found by police and and all essences of the essences of the phrase when we went down that road it's kind of in the middle of nowhere moderately busy a lot of flat land but eventually after going three or four miles down that long span of road we did a bit did eventually find the exact spot where madeline soda was found by police let's take a look so we just turned onto hickory road where madeline soto's body was found not to be confused with old Hickory Road. That's where police and investigators say they did catch Stephen Stearns in that 2010 Lincoln MKZ changing a tire the morning of February 26 when Maddie Soto went missing. But as we look up here on Hickory Road, we see that it's pretty flat. There are some wooded areas to the left. If you look up to the right of the road, that is it. That is, that's the exact spot where Maddie Soto was found. But right here behind me is the memorial site actually where she was found right in between those trees and we actually have some community advocates advocate members out here with us and they tell us that one of them actually has been in contact with the owner of this land right here behind me and that day that morning of february 26th they say that gate was open just no they're not all right so let's see sorry about that Okay, that's not what it shows. <laughs> what the heck? I'm so sorry. I wouldn't have lasted this long in the entertainment industry if I hadn't taken a few risks. But I'm also a realist because I've seen it all.
all. Gold gives you everything the stock market can't. A hedge against inflation, a protection against economic all crashes, right. and the <clears throat> best way to protect your family and their interests. Gold. Ruled out anything. But they're all to be guilty that would mean she allowed this even more horrible yeah, I, I understand uh let's see all abs no idea what the dynamic is like but you just again yeah I mean, and that's what i had it on shorty but media chatter i will it didn't uh, going, uh the, it wasn't played at least not on that we stated at this press conference we don't know how at least not on their website anyway Of course, but I'm here to help you stay kind of. Estamos encendidos. Si encendimos, si estamos conectados con Miami. Miami está grabando ya, verdad? Sí, Miami ya está grabando. Y van a empezar en punto a las dos. Tenemos seis minutos. Así que díganme. April, with this comment, we don't want the mom to be guilty that would mean she allowed this even more horrible yeah, i understand that there's a lot of a lot we might be getting there covering facts takes there we go i'm so sorry and like before her death hop on really quickly and say hello to yet begun the time is now conference you will receive a package with information about the case in English and Spanish. Now I would like to introduce Chief Betty Holland. We'll break down what we have learned after the press conference concludes. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today and allowing us to provide an update on our investigation into Madeline Soto's disappearance and death. Madeline was reported missing on Monday, February 26, 2024, just one day after her 13th birthday. Since then, our investigation has been relentless, fueled by the unwavering commitment to uncover the truth. During our forensic investigation, we uncovered disturbing evidence, graphic images, yes, thank you. and videos depicting crimes being committed. It was during this examination that we learned we needed to act swiftly to remove the suspect, Stefan Stearns, from our streets. Despite the arrest, our investigation into her disappearance remained ongoing. We understand the importance of thoroughly exploring every lead and piece of evidence. The Kissimmee Police Department, along with other law enforcement agencies in Central Florida, continue their search for Madeline for the next several days following her disappearance, and we turn to the public for help. During this time, our investigators combed through a significant number of tips, and on March 1st, we received information placing Stern's vehicle in a rural area of St. Cloud, where ultimately Madeline's body was discovered. We are all deeply saddened by the outcome of Madeline's disappearance. The Kissimmee Police Department continues to piece together the timeline leading up to the events that occurred. I want to address some questions we are receiving from the media in everyone's effort to keep the community up to date on this. Can project. everybody hear that just fine? At this time, Stearns is facing a total of 60 charges related to our investigation. This includes sexual battery, lewd and lascivious molestation, and unlawful possession of materials depicting sexual performance by a child. These charges reflect the meticulous work of our law enforcement community. Our detectives also are working closely with the state's attorney's office for the Ninth Judicial Circuit and the medical examiner's this office on the investigation. Death investigations are complex. Tasks like forensic analysis and thorough interviews are crucial and require careful attention. It is vital to address Thank these you. misconceptions in the pursuit of justice while preserving the integrity to the case. During our investigation, excuse me, during an investigation such as this one, we gather additional information from individuals close to the deceased. Each person interviewed is treated as involved until proven otherwise. This is a standard protocol to ensure all the facts are uncovered. During our investigation, we have interviewed many individuals, 
Each interview has been vital to our understanding of the case. We are reviewing all of the information we received and are following up on every lead. Attention to detail and the diligence are the most important aspects of this investigation. We are committed to transparency and will provide updates when possible. Madeline's story has touched the hearts of many. Rest assured, our department is diligently working on the investigation. And while we appreciate the public's interest, we must prioritize the, pub the integrity of the investigation. We appreciate your support and understanding as we gather the facts. We intend to release additional information in the future, providing more details that we do not compromise the ongoing investigation. We vow to do everything in our power to ensure Madeline's memory is honored with justice. Our detectives are dedicated to pursuing every lead, uncovering every fact, and holding those responsible accountable. Now I will open it up for any questions. Chief, I have a question. Uh, we know that you're working behind the scenes. So no real updates. <laughs> Um, I don't have anything new that you don't already know other than our detectives are working tirelessly day in and day out to ensure, you know, all the facts are uncovered in this investigation. Yes. Uh, is, is the mother a suspect or a person of interest in this investigation? And also with the videos that you uncovered, is there any evidence of the mother's involvement on any of these videos? So everyone that was close to Madeline is considered suspect until we have proven otherwise. Chief, how close are we able to know what actually happened to Madeline Soto? Well, you know, this is a very sensitive and, um, you know, it's, it's very intricate. We want to make sure that we uncover every single fact and all the evidence before, you know, we don't want to put a timeline on it, basically, you know, because the detectives are very meticulous in what they do, and we want to be sure that everything is uncovered that possibly can. Chief, can you release any information about the manner in which Maddie died at this point? No, ma'am, we are still waiting on the medical examiner's report. Wow. Do you believe Maddie was killed inside of the family's home or somewhere else? We're still uncovering all of those details. Um, I'm not going to speculate on that until we have the facts. Chief, can you tell us, tell us if Stephen Stearns acted alone in all of this? We're still uncovering all the evidence. I don't want to speculate whether he was or not. Um, we will wait until the investigation, you know, is completed to make that determination. Has but, Stephen Stern said he act, has acted alone, or what has he said in interviews with you? Since he, we know he's in jail. But he's, yes. What has he told you about other people's involvement, if any? He has invoked his right to a lawyer, so we have not spoke with him. Is there Chief, any time that you can expect an update for us? The public is asking every single day, and we understand that you're working on the investigation, but we would like to give them something. I, I don't want to rush my detectives. I think it's paramount that they take their time. And, you know, Absolutely. Mr. Stearns is not going anywhere. You know, he's in jail, and he's going to be there for a while. So my detectives, you know, I want them to be, you know, just look at every single detail and make sure. Um, but I don't want to give a timeline at this point. Chief, you mentioned you're working closely with the medical examiner. Um, what does that relationship kind of look like, and what information – are they able to release to you before that end day was complete? So, not really. Um, I wouldn't say that they've released an information. We depend on the medical examiner's report for our our report. So we're going to have to wait until they release that report. Do you believe there are any additional victims? Uh, no. It appears that this all was isolated to the home. Chief, I'm still trying to get a sense of things. Well, that's nice to know. You have more questions than answers at this point. Poor Maddie. I think our questions are being answered slowly but surely. Um, you know, for the integrity of the investigation, we have to, you know, keep things close um, until such time as we hold those accountable for her death. Chief, do you feel like this is taking longer than it should because Stern is not speaking? No, I just think that, you know, sometimes these investigations are just very lengthy. Um, we know that he is in jail and he is not going anywhere. So the detectives are just making. Yeah, sure those are some heavy, heavy eyes, charges. You know, and dot their eyes. You know, they, they want to put together, you know, a foolproof investigation. Chief, is the mother and the family members being cooperative and answering questions? Have they lawyered up? And also the father of Madeline, who is not a Florida resident, is he a part of this investigation or at least being asked questions? We have interviewed, um, you know, all those family members that are close. 
uh, mother has cooperated. She did give us an interview. Um, so there's, you know, no one is, is not cooperating other than Stearns. We know that the crimes were committed in the home. We also have, you know, the date of birth of the person, but we have not confirmed that that is Madeline Soto. Would you be able to confirm that information for us? Right. So all of the charges are with uh, children under the age of 18, and, you know, they are protected. Their identity is protected under the law. If it's just Madeline, why can't she say it's just Madeline? Nobody knows exactly what happened to Madeline. We can expect in the couple days someone is going to face charge for the murder of Madeline Soto. When the detectives put their case together, you know, like I said before, they want to ensure their investigation is tight. We're working, you know, hand in hand with the state attorney's office to ensure you know, every piece of evidence is revealed and uncovered. So I can't put a timeline on when that might be. And Chief, with his cell phone, there's just one thing I understand here. So he, he originally went to the Orange County Sheriff's Office. At least that's what we understand. He gave the cell phone to the Orange County Sheriff's Office. The Sheriff's Office then found something on his phone which led to an arrest. In the arrest affidavit from Kissimmee PD, it says he offered his phone freely to Kissimmee PD. Can you kind of explain how that happened? Because I just have a tough time understanding how somebody who's been arrested for something on his phone freely gives a phone up again. Well, I don't know the intricate details. Because he thought he could delete I know everything. The County Sheriff's Office and Kissimmee Police Department were working hand in hand, you know, uh, during, you know, the um, the actual disappearance investigation. So I don't want to speak on exactly how that happened, but it's not uncommon for us to ask um, someone if they want to, you know, give up their phone. Chief, is there anything in particular that keeps you up at night regarding this case? Well, a lot of things keep me up at night. Um, you know, I'll come back to that question. My takeaway from this is talk to your children, families, talk to your kids. Um, know that there are um, agencies out there, the abuse hotline, help now, you know, that people can report suspicion to. And I would encourage mothers and fathers to have those conversations with the kids and, uh, and be aware. So last question. Know, last question. Have you guys investigated this family before? Not for anything like this, no, ma'am. I'm sorry. Can we just confirm how long that relationship was? What did she say? That is still um, being under investigation. We're trying to get the timeline for that. Chief, I have one more Thank question. You. This you, is a case that uh, became really big um, out of nowhere for a lot of people. But what has the department learned through all of this so far? Well, this was a very tragic event. Um, you know, I think that. Like I said earlier, it's up, up to us, up to each family member to have those conversations with your kids. Let me back that up for just a minute. Not for anything like that. People can report suspicion too, and I would encourage mothers and fathers to have those conversations <coughs> with the kids and, uh, and be aware. So last question, last question. Have you guys investigated this family before? Not for anything like this, no ma'am. The question was, have you guys investigated this family before? She said, not for anything like this. She also um, would not clear the mother. I'm sorry, can we just confirm how long that relationship was, the mother and the stepfather? That is still um, being under investigation. We're trying to get the timeline for that. Chief, I have one more Thank question. You. This you. is a case that uh, became really <coughs> big um, out of nowhere for a lot of people, but what has the department learned through all of this so far? Well, this was a very tragic event um you know i think that like i said earlier it's up, up to us up to each family member to have those conversations with your kids and report any suspicion of abuse um, to your school resource officer to uh, you know an adult that's a trusted adult um, to any police officer that's out there so just report it and let the law enforcement community um, investigate okay. thank, thank you, you. Hmm. JB's face. Oh gosh. Look at his face. That's mine right now too. <laughs> oh goodness. You gotta love JB. <laughs> I'm baffled. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm just baffled. That's my first. I just want to always up front and honest with our audience. I'm baffled. 
So my key takeaways were she would not clear the mother. Um, the images, I believe she said the images were, she wouldn't say that they were just of Maddie. She said they were of children 18 and under. Um, however, as far as this is concerned, she thinks it's, or they feel that it's just Maddie that was involved. So that kind of answers the question. Kind of doesn't. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Unless they didn't actually release and uh, that, that, you know, maybe that's just a rumor. I haven't seen any proof of it. I've seen it said, though. I want to see real quick what JB has to say. Uh, no significant update today. No charges, uh, any charges, let alone murder charges being filed in this case. It's a little uh, disappointing. The Kissimmee Police Department, uh, on their own accord, deciding to call a press conference today. And the press conference was, there was the anticipation from local media. That Strange. Was going to, be to announce an update, to announce new details, to give us an update on the progress of the investigation and what has transpired in the week since Madeline Soto's body was discovered and since Stearns was uh, charged, initially charged, and then a follow-up 60 additional charges were filed against him related to the disturbing evidence on his phone. Here we are now, and we have this press conference from Chief Betty Holland, and Betty tells us... Uh, yeah, she, she did say it was isolated uh, to the home. I, I think I'm being kind when I say very, very little. Based on, on my notes, they're still waiting on the medical examiner's report. And when specific questions were asked in relation to Madeline's mother, Jennifer Soto, uh, everyone close to Madeline is considered a suspect until otherwise, which basically tells us they haven't ruled out anything. Right. But they're also not definitively stating anything that has transpired with the progress of their investigation. I think it also has to be stated that when you and perhaps this is something that people might not know about how law enforcement operates for the most part this is this proves to be true that when a sheriff's office gives a case over to a local police department the case can shift in pacing in this one respect and that a county sheriff's office usually more times than not is going to have a larger investigative force and a more investigative resources than a Wow. So, yeah, pretty disappointing. Um, I certainly was hoping for something on the mother. Um, just I think just her actions since this began has given everybody kind of, you know, the side eye. Everybody's given that to her. Lots of red flags and maybe she doesn't know. Um, it's very important. You know, she has not been charged with anything at all. She's been crucified and charged in the public, uh, which is why she's probably in hiding. Um, I can't say that I blame her there. However, and, and I don't know, what, what do we expect her to come out and say? Uh, if she had nothing to do with this, I couldn't, I can't, like, so the words won't even come. I can't even imagine what she's thinking, how she's feeling, and how she would be be second guessing the past eight years or so of her life and questioning every single incident and it would that would be really tough so i think it's important to um remain kind of in the middle as much as we possibly can i am one of those that i do think that it's strange if the mom had no idea no red flags uh if there were they were ignored um all those images and videos over, I mean, my gosh, what, 800, 400, 600? We don't even know how many. 10 counts, 40 each. So we know there's at least 400. Um, but yeah, I, I don't understand how she wouldn't know. I think, yeah, I think that she 
she should say something at this point, especially if she's innocent. Absolutely, if she's innocent. As hard as it would it would be. I mean, think of uh, Riley Strain's mom. She bless her heart. She can't hold it together for anything. I mean, she's you know just constantly crying, and it's heartbreaking to watch her. And even if the mom came out and and was genuine and couldn't hold it together we as a public would view her in a much different light than what we are now i think anyway um there's always going to be people that are set in what they think happened uh despite the evidence that we've been shown um but i do i i agree shorty i think that if the mom would make a statement um, at least just thanking law enforcement, thanking all those people that looked for Madeline that, you know, fell in love with her and and trying to advocate for her and her story. Um, I think that that would make a big difference. Not ever coming across anything in the phone is crazy. Yeah, it is to me, too. And like I said, I'm not one that goes through my husband's phone or anything like that. Um, I, I do think that sometimes, I don't know, you know, like if somebody calls or texts him and he's not around, he, he runs his own business. So I might glance down and see it might be important. You know, there's been times that I've had to get on his phone, surely over eight years, she would have had to as well. And if not, would it, I mean, would it send red flags if he didn't let her have access to it? And what about Madeline's phone in a calculator app? <laughs> well, thankfully, Stefan was not very smart. He thought he could just, you know, delete his phone, reset it, factory reset it, and it would get rid of all the evidence that he had. And that's just not how it works. Thankfully, it's not. Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying too, Shorty. But occasionally, over at least eight years, you you know, you would think, but maybe not. Some people are pretty smooth. So, I'm not positive that she has actually been cremated. Let me see if I can find out, because I know that that's been a rumor Let me just look real quick. Yeah, so there's nothing that is. Let me share my screen with you. So, let's see here. The only thing I have seen are like um, TikTok videos, you know, uh, things like that. But I haven't seen anybody specifically or any like news outlet or anything. It was mentioned on her GoFundMe. Okay. So, yeah, all I see is like a church held a memorial service, um, that kind of thing. So I don't see um, TikTok. There's TikTok videos. Um, she had a memorial service. But that says nothing, and that's Fox 35, nothing about her being cremated there. 
So I don't know, you know, if it said it in the GoFundMe, then, um, then I guess that's possible, but it doesn't make much sense in the middle of a ongoing murder investigation for them to have released uh, a body and allowed it her to be cremated so quickly. And also, I mean, to me, that just seemed fast anyway, in general, those things, you know, sometimes take time. But in a case like this, you would definitely think it would be, you know, taken a little longer. Yeah, and if, if he seemed guarded with it, um, she would have, you know, probably just suspected he was cheating. Maybe that's why they broke up all the time, because they broke up an awful lot. That's possible. I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. The reason I don't think that that is probably what happened is because he had been doing this, you know, dating back to when she was, what, eight, nine years old. So, I and I don't think that, that he would have, you know, that he drugged her every time. I think he was just, he's just a monster. He's just flat out a monster. He didn't need to, to drug her to do anything. Um, we all saw that affidavit and it's, it's horrible. I mean, maybe, but that's pretty shitty. <laughs> that's pretty shitty. If so, I mean, we all kind of tend to ignore red flags, you know, under certain circumstances, I think, but some are just too big to ignore. And I don't know. I just feel like she has some sort of responsibility in this, whether she knew or not. Um, it's her child. She is the mother. He was not the stepfather, like he called himself, and her mom called him that too. He wasn't the stepfather. They were never married. They were on again, off again. He's a jobless creep. So I don't know. Oh. I'm sorry, Shorty, that sucks. Yeah, I think she has some sort of responsibility. I mean, if we're if we're putting parents in prison now because their son, you know, takes a, a gun that they purchase for him and goes and shoots up a school, we're going to put mom, stepmom and dad in prison. Then where does that where does that end? which is why I thought that was that case uh, was setting a really bad precedent when they uh, did that. But yeah, at least neglect. I mean, if you're following the Elijah Vu case, um, his mom has chronic neglect charges against her. They haven't found Elijah. I'm pretty sure that they know he's no longer with us, but they haven't found him. But they did at least get, you know, they got her on that at least. And he wasn't directly in her care. He was actually with Jesse at the time, but said multiple kids. See, I did not hear that. Let me go back. Insurance can be confusing and unclear. One minute your doctor's in network, and the next minute they're not. It isn't transparent, or well, fair. Finally, it doesn't have to be that way. And because in Florida, I'm going to rewind it just kind of back to that part there and see what they had said about it the mind i'm a bit baffled as to up up to us up to each family member to have those conversations with the 
mother and the family members being cooperative and answering questions? Have they lawyered up? And also the father of Madeline, who is not a Florida resident. It was a little before well, there. Well, you know, this is a very sensitive and, um, you know, it's, it's very intricate. We want to make sure that we uncover every single fact okay. and all the evidence before, you know, we don't want to put a timeline on it, basically, you know, because the detectives are very meticulous in what they do, and we want to be sure that everything is uncovered that possibly can. Chief, can you release any information about the manner in which Maddie died at this point? No, ma'am. We are still waiting on the medical examiner's report. Chief, do you believe Maddie was killed inside of the family's home or somewhere else? We're still uncovering all of those details. Um, I'm not going to speculate on that until we have the facts. Chief, can you tell us, tell us if Stephanie Stearns acted alone in all of this? We're still uncovering all the evidence. I don't want to speculate. So still uncovering all the evidence um, related to whether or not he acted alone. Whether he was or not. Um, we will wait until the investigation, you know, is completed to make that determination. Has Stephen Stern said he act, has acted alone, or what has he said in interviews with you? Since he, we know he's in jail, but he's, yes. what has he told you about other people's involvement, if any? He has invoked his right to a lawyer, so we have not spoke with him. Is there any time that you can expect an update for us? The public is asking every single day, and we understand that you're working on the investigation, but we would like to give them something. I, I don't want to rush my detectives. I think it's Thank fair you. enough that they take their time and you know mr stearns is not going anywhere you know he's in jail and he's going to be there for a while so my detectives you know i want them to be you know just look at every single detail and make sure um, but i don't want to give a timeline at this point you mentioned you're working closely with the medical examiner um, what does that relationship kind of look like and what information are they able to release to you before that end day was complete so not really um, i wouldn't say that they've released and information we depend on the medical examiner's report for our our report so we're going to have to wait until they release that report did you believe there are any additional victims uh no it appears that this so the question was do you believe there are any additional victims she says no was isolated to the home they no. she feels it was they feel it was isolated to the home so apparently that tells me they didn't discover images of other children and what have you um, on his devices. Chief, I'm still trying to get a sense of things. Do you still feel like you have more questions than answers at this point? I think our questions are being answered slowly but surely. Um, you know, for the integrity of the investigation, we have to, you know, keep things close um, until such time as we hold those accountable for her death. Chief, do you feel like this is taking longer than it should because Stearns is not speaking? No, I just think that, you know, sometimes these investigations are just very lengthy. Um, we know that he is in jail and he is not going anywhere. So the detectives are just making sure they cross their eye or cross the T's and dot their eyes. You know, they, they want to put together, you know, a foolproof investigation. Chief, is the mother and the family members being cooperative and answering questions? Have they lawyered up? And also the father of Madeline, who is not a Florida resident, is he a part of this investigation or at least being asked questions? We have interviewed, um, you know, all those family members that are close. Uh, mother has cooperated. She did give us an interview. Um, so when i heard her say that the first time i i got got a feeling about that like so it wasn't a strong yes the mother is cooperating it, it didn't come off that way it's kind of like yeah she gave us a statement that kind of answer does, does you guys take it that way there's you know no one is is not cooperating other than stones we know that the crimes were committed in the home we also have you know the date of birth of the person but we have not confirmed that that is madison soto would you be able to confirm that information for us right so all of the charges are with uh children under the age of 18 and you know they are protected their identity is protected under the law okay but she already said so i believe all the images videos whatever he had um they just can't because because maddie is under you know she's a minor they can't they can't say that legally they can't do that yeah no other victims at least not that they are aware of there are no other victims they think everything pretty much happened in the home charge for the mother there's madeline nobody knows exactly what happened to madeline we can expect in the couple days someone is going to face charge for the mother of madeline soto when the detectives put their case together you know like i said before they want to ensure their investigation is tight we're working you know hand in hand with the state attorney's office to ensure you know every piece of evidence is revealed and uncovered so i can't put a timeline on when that might be. And she, with his cell phone, there's just one thing I understand here. So he originally went to the Orange County Sheriff's Office. 
at least that's what we understand. He gave the cell phone to the Orange County Sheriff's Office. The Sheriff's Office then found something on his phone, which led to an arrest. In the arrest affidavit from Kissimmee PD, it says he offered his phone freely to Kissimmee PD. Can you kind of explain how that happened? Because I just have a tough time understanding how somebody who's been arrested for something on his phone freely gives a phone up again. Well, I don't know the intricate details. Of, I do know that the Orange County Sheriff's Office and Kissimmee Police Department Chief, I have one more question. Thank you. Thank this you. is a case that uh, became really big um, out of nowhere for a lot of people, but what has the department learned through all of this so far? Well, this was a very... All right, so, yeah, um, all 60 charges are on Madeline. Um, we pretty much knew that because they do put the birth date anyway. Um, it appears that everything that happened to her did happen in the home, which also gives me, you know, it makes me question again how the mom didn't know. And your little girl's nine years old. Um, if you guys, you know, if you read that probable cause, some the things he did to her, there would have there would have been evidence left behind. Does that make sense? Especially at nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I don't know. I I hate to like I hate to blame in any of these cases. I hate to put blame without knowing. I really do because it can it can destroy people. You know, destroy their lives. But yeah, <laughs> dumbass thought he could wipe his phone. That's how I I see it too, Shorty. Because I think she made it clear. She made it clear enough in other ways. Uh, but I think that the big takeaway, and maybe that's why I'm still trying to figure out why they even called this press conference. Um, the only thing I can think of is there has been so much, all the coverage. The coverage isn't about Madeline. The coverage is about Madeline's mom. So maybe the um, maybe they felt pressed to give some sort of statement. And in doing so, she says that uh, she's not ruled out. So, yeah. No wonder she wanted to go live in the woods when she turned 13. I would, too. All right, so that is it. We didn't really get much extra information. Probably just create more questions and uh, <laughs> more conspiracy theories and rumors. But it is what it is, and that's all they're going to give us, so... Anyway, are you guys following um, the Riley strain case or Elijah Vu? Um, I am covering both of those. So if anything happens to come up with Riley um, significant, then I absolutely will go live with that right away. Um, Elijah, if you are, um, if you have been paying attention to his case, um, Jesse was due in court this morning for his preliminary hearing. However, they just assigned him two attorneys. Um, so the date was pushed back. And Katrina, Elijah's mother, she has her um, hearing is Friday at four o'clock. So I will go live for that. Yeah. Yeah, and I wonder, and, and here's another thing I do want to clear up, though. I, I I wish, I need to start writing these things down when I see them, when I see, like, rumors and stuff, but I, I know differently. But um, her birthday party, it wasn't just her and grown men. Um, I see it everywhere. It was not just her and grown men. Uh, one of the girls, the girlfriend of Maddie, her mother um, actually did make, say that there were two friends, so... For her 13th birthday party, she got to have a whole two friends there. So it wasn't all just men, though. And it was also said by that same friend's mom that neither the mother nor Stefan were at that birthday party. Of course, we know Grandma said she called him, um, or the mom wanted him to come pick her up and bring her home.
Yes, thank you so much. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for hanging in there um, with those issues. It never fails. Always have issues. One day, hopefully, I won't. But we did. We made it through it. Yes, and definitely. I know, huh? I am too. I am too. Yeah, her family. So it was the mom side of the family, which sounds like it was just grandma. Um, she's not anybody that's impressed me much either. And that could just be because she um, has only done interviews in Spanish. I don't understand Spanish. And then... A lot of times things do get lost, like in translation. So things that she said may not have been the exact way she meant it, you know. But not thrilled with her. Like, where is she in all this? I'm a grandma. And let me tell you, I would be screaming from rooftops. Screaming. Uh, I'd be beside myself. Anyway. With that, thank you guys again so much for being here and joining us. I appreciate it. And um, hi, Z, you're so welcome. <laughs> um, yes, absolutely. We do want justice. So you guys have a wonderful day. Um, take care of each other. Take care of yourselves. And I will see you back here real soon. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.